Everybody is on their last vacation hoorah for the summer. Isn't it hard to believe that summer's coming to an end already? Before you know it, the snow will be flying. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get the deacons to put a screen in here next week so you can tomato me and egg me all you want. But, uh, look, I'm not looking, for, looking forward to winter either. I'm really not. But uh, I'm optimistic. We have August, September, and October yet. So we've got a good three months yet of nice sunny weather. So, so I'm glad you're here today. I want you to know uh, this morning our service is just going to be a little different. Um, we're going to a- address a topic here over the next two weeks that is very real. Uh, very, very real, and Pastor Tim has shared in, in his announcements that, that it may not affect everybody, but in reality, it does affect us all. It affects us all. And uh, Ray Comfort did a series here several years, or did a documentary here several years ago and on this topic, and I was going through the video here just yesterday trying to pull out two or three minute excerpts of that for you this morning, and I couldn't do it. I was unable to do it. So this morning, I'm going to share with you an 18-minute clip. It's 18 minutes long. The, the video itself is 37 minutes long. I'm not giving Ray Comfort that much time of the pulpit this morning, but we'll give him 18 minutes. It's very relevant. It, it goes right along with this message. We'll get started with the message this morning, but we will not get into the points until next week. But we will get, we will get started with it today. And I want you to know before the video comes on that parts of this video may be disturbing to you. It's not bloody, it's not gory, okay? But they may be disturbing to you. And this is a topic that is very, very, very relevant in our society today. And so I would ask, let me think here. Jamie, would you turn the lights off back there for me? Kill all of them. And Kirk is going to hit the, bring the DVD up, hit the play button, and I want you to watch the next 18 minutes, okay? And in Austria, if you even deny the Holocaust took place, they'll throw you in jail. Germany so wants to keep alive the memory of that horror, it has mandatory Holocaust education for its children. This is because it's been rightly said that those who forget history are destined to repeat it. Adolf Hitler, what do you know about him? He was, uh, uh, what's it called? He was kind of a president. What do you know about Adolf Hitler? I really don't know anything about it. (laughs) Have you heard of Adolf Hitler? Um, no. <laughs> Never heard of him? No. I vaguely remember him. Who was Adolf Hitler? Um, he was the guy that's in... Was he German? I really don't know that much about him. Who was Adolf Hitler? Um... Uh, this guy... With the... He had a mustache. Who was Adolf Hitler? Uh, he was a communist riot leader of Germany. Who was Adolf Hitler? I don't know. You have no idea at all? No. Uh, he was a communist. Um, is he like an a, a actor or someone? He's like something about Holocaust. So tell me what you know about Adolf Hitler. Uh, I don't know anything about him. You ever heard of him? No, I haven't. Who's the guy with the mustache? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. You're about to meet Steve. As you'll see, Steve is a self-proclaimed neo-Nazi who loves Adolf Hitler, hates Jews, and people of dark skin. White people are up here, and then there's the Jews. So the white man is the best man. What's the purpose of man's existence? To get drunk and have a blue mohawk. What was Jesus Christ? Savior. No, he was a Jew. And what did Jews do? They lie. 
Christianity is a Jewish trick, but it hasn't tricked me because I'm Greek and I'm smarter than that. Spell the word shop. Shop? S-H-O-P? What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Green light. <laughs> See, now, if you can make a mistake with something as simple as that, yeah, that just, think, just think if you're making a mistake when this well, whole right. philosophy... You're making a mistake. I don't hate black people because they're black. I hate black people because they're pieces of <laughs> Because they ruin every neighborhood they come into because they do bad things to my people because of the color of our skin. This country is and I hate America. Your man was ripped by a bunch of little weak Jews that were like, that couldn't stand up for themselves, so they had to make up a fake God to protect them because they're a weak race. Jesus was a Jew. And if you were in Auschwitz, I'd give him a tattoo. I don't feel was not evil. So who, what do you have to do to be evil? He killed six million Jews and blacks and, and, and gypsies and, and homosexuals? I don't believe that. I think that's a lie. I don't think he killed that many people. I love Hitler. Why? Because he wanted to cleanse the world of non-white races. Adolf Hitler is the uh, most famous uh, criminal in the world. Don't you think he was evil? Evil? No. No. Who was Adolf Hitler? Uh, the leader of the Nazis. He ran the fascist movement uh, in World War II, right? Good guy? Bad guy? He was intelligent, but he was what he was doing was bad. Have you heard of Adolf Hitler? Yes. Yeah. What did he do? Uh, he killed a lot of people and tried to take over the world. Good guy or bad guy? Bad. I can ask you this question. It's not a racist question, but are you German? Being so, ein Deutschlander. Can I ask you a question? Maybe, you that, maybe I'm saying too yeah. much. I don't what do you think? But, you know, it's a great one. But, dude, I don't know how you sleep at night. Do you admire Adolf Hitler? Absolutely. Is he evil? No. Is he evil when he killed the Jews? He didn't do that. Who did it? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. The Holocaust didn't happen. Who were the killers? The Jews. Don't you understand that America's run by Jews? Don't you understand that? Don't you get it? Don't you grab a hold of it? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? Our king told you what's wrong with it. It will bring hell on earth, and it has. Look around you right now and see. See the result of Judaism. Are you nuts? Are you crazy with your hatred? Your hatred? You just hate. You hate. You hate with evil. Stop it. Stop talking like a Jew. And you know what Hitler said? As he said, Christianity is a nice religion, but let's let it die out. He put the Jewish people in concentration camps. And he basically uh, brainwashed the whole German civilization into believing that Jews were evil and you needed to get rid of them. He started World War II. It's 1939. You've got a high-powered rifle and Adolf Hitler is in your sights. Do you take him out? Absolutely. Okay. So you didn't hesitate. Would you take him out? Yes. Okay, it's uh, about 30 years earlier. Um, Mrs. Hitler is pregnant with Adolf. Would you take her out? If I knew what he was going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you shoot him? Well, immediately. Immediately. I would shoot him and tear him apart. If you go back 30 years earlier and Adolf Hitler's mother is pregnant with Adolf and you've got a high-powered rifle and you had one shot, would you take him out? Would you kill her to kill him? Uh, definitely. definitely. Uh, kill her, kill him and kill his relatives. Everybody who belongs to Hitler family. Did he kill millions of Russians? Oh yeah, that's not he personally, but German army did millions and millions. Russia lost about 30 million people in the Second World War. And, uh, he destroyed, uh, German army destroyed uh, most of the European part of Soviet Union. Did you lose any relatives? Oh yeah, I lost my father, my grandmother, my aunt, my brother. Hitler hated Christianity. 
He called it a disease and once said the heaviest blow which ever struck humanity was Christianity, adding that it was an invention of the Jew. He killed or imprisoned genuine pastors and replaced them with his own Nazi pastors. He also replaced the cross with a swastika, printed 100,000 copies of his own twisted Bible, rewrote the Ten Commandments, and then created his own Aryan, anti-Semitic, non-Jewish Jesus. But most importantly, all this sprung from the fact that Hitler had created his own image of God and was what the Bible calls an idolater. He had another God before the God of the Bible. Like Judas Iscariot, he professed to be a follower of Jesus of Nazareth, but his motive was for his own evil agenda. And that agenda was very clear. He said, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. Adolf Hitler deceived the youth of Germany. He deceived many within the traditional church. But most of all, he deceived the millions of Germans who believed his lie about the supremacy of the German race. History tells us of one man who was present when the Nazis killed 1,600 Jews on April the 6th, 1942. He witnessed them being shot and then being buried alive. I saw them do the killing. At 5 p.m. they gave the command, fill in the pits. Screams and groans were coming from the pits. Suddenly I saw my neighbor Ruderman rise from under the soil. His eyes were bloody and he was screaming, finish me off. A murdered woman lay at my feet. A boy of five years crawled out from under her body and began to scream desperately, Mommy! That was all I saw since I fell unconscious. It's 1943. A German officer has pointed a machine gun at you and told you to get in a bulldozer and drive it forward. You look in front of you, there's a big pit. Hundreds of Jewish families have been shot and they're in the pits, many of them are dead, but some of them are still alive. He's telling you to bury them alive. You know that if you say no, he's just gonna say okay and shoot you with his machine oh gun, okay? And someone else is gonna do it, he's gonna do it. Would you do what he says? I don't know. Well, I think that's a powerful question. If you do what he says, he's gonna let you live. Would you drive the bulldozer forward? No. No. Why not, they're gonna die anyway? Because I'd rather die not doing that knowing that I was a cause. Would you drive the bulldozer? Absolutely not. I think I would do it forward only because of um, the fear of my own life and feeling, fearing that I, ha I have no other choice. Would you do what he says? Absolutely, I would not. What about you, would you drive it forward? No, nah, I'd take the shot. Would you do what he says? Probably yes. You just bury those Jews? Yeah, if, I, if it was me or uh, if it was my life, I would probably do that, yeah. I'd do it. Okay, what say the soldier said to you? Look, I don't want you to bury these people alive. I'm just going to give you my gun and you just finish them all off. Just shoot them. Would you do that? Now, that would be harder to do. Yeah, that would be something. It's almost more merciful to be shot than buried alive, don't you think? Oh, I think so, yeah. So you wouldn't shoot them, but you'd bury them? Yeah. What's the difference? Because I would think that most of them would be dead. That would be the... the yeah, but there's some still alive. Yeah, I would probably try to put that out of, out of my mind. Would you do what he says? Absolutely not. He may as well shoot me. If he said, uh, take my gun, we've got a dozen officers pointing their guns at you, I want you to shoot those Jews. No, dude, no, no. So you wouldn't shoot them? No. Nah, you'd like bury them? If... The... Well, then I would probably do it just to save myself and my family. If he said to you, I want you to take this machine gun and finish those Jews off, would you do that? No, I wouldn't kill anybody. I couldn't do it. But you're burying them alive, which is worse than being shot with a bullet. You're killing me, man. Um, I, that's a tough decision. Would you do what he wants? Yeah. you just drive it forward? You wouldn't hesitate? No. Would you drive it forward? No. No, I would not. Would you do what he wants? No. Why not? Well, for one, that's not morally right to me. What can one person do if just that one person got out of the bulldozer? You know what I mean? Like, 
then their life is is gone too. It's that everyone needed to rise up against him, you know. And I think that's what a lot of people. Where was the world? You know, where where was everybody? You know, maybe everybody is made up of individuals that would say, "I could never bury human beings alive. I'd rather die than do that." You value life, of course. So you wouldn't take human life. You you value human life. Yeah. How do you feel about abortion? Hmm. It all depends. That's a tricky subject. Sounds like you value human life. I do value human life. Alicia, how do you feel about abortion? Ah.、Uh, I feel that.、Um, It's a it's a woman's right to choose, and every situation is a different situation. I'm for abortion. You know that's a tricky situation.、Um, I am pro life, but you know until you're, it's really easy from the outside to say,、um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But until you're actually in that situation, there's no saying what you will do. I mean, it's、really、if you're pro life, you believe it's a baby in the womb. Absolutely, yes. When does it become a life? Well, it kind of does at the start, but it's not as much until after three months. This is actual footage of a baby in the womb at just six weeks, six days of age. You can clearly see the baby's eyes, hands, and heartbeat. There's a fetus there, not a baby. You don't think it's a baby? Not yet. Not until three months. Do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yes. Okay, finish the sentence for me. Okay. <laughs> it's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? I don't know. Do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Finish the sentence for me. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? If it comes from something that shouldn't have happened. When does it become a life? <sighs> That's a tough one. I well, here's here's a question. If, if you're in doubt, okay, I'm a I'm a construction worker and I see a building and I say to you, I'm just going to blow up that building in a minute. Um, there's a possibility there's somebody in there. I just don't know, but I'm going to blow up, blow it up anyway. What would you say to me? I'm not sure if there's life in that building or not, but I'm going to blow it up anyway. Have you had an abortion? Actually, yes, I have. Do you feel guilty about it? No. What justifies the killing of a baby in a womb? If you can't support it when it comes out. I think it's better to have a plan. I think it's you know if you're going to do something like that, you should definitely give it much much more thought. It's not something you should you know just lightly say, oh well, let's just go do it. You know. Can you say that's like saying, look, before you bury those Jews alive, just give us some thought and then bury them alive. You see the see the. Yeah, I see where you're going with this. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of the same thing. Here's you, Frank. You would give your life for Jews who are going to die anyway. And yet you won't speak up against the murder of children in the womb. I would like you to say that is wrong. To kill a child in the womb, the safest place on earth is a mother's womb, and to actually go in there and destroy a, a human life. Why? For selfish reasons. Well, depending, I guess, right? I mean, it would depend on the reasons. Well, tell me a reason for killing a baby in the womb. Well, I mean, you know, if it's rape or something like that, you know what I mean? Which is, I know, a tough decision, but that's mentally, you know, for. Why is it tough? Why would you kill the baby for the crime of the father? Which is worse, murder or rape? You're murdering a child, taking another life because of the crime of the father. Who knows when life begins? I wouldn't know. Do you think God knows when life begins? I think yeah, probably. And do you know what the sixth commandment is? No, no. It says you shall not kill. So you should say it's never right to kill a child in the womb. And this, and Hitler declared Jews as non-humans, and that's what you're doing when you're saying it's not a baby until three months. That's what I think. It's very subjective. And if you're not sure, it's taking a terrible risk with somebody else's life. Imagine if someone said that about you when you were just on three months old, and they decided to kill you because of selfish reasons. I wouldn't want other people to judge me, so I wouldn't want to do that to other people. So whatever their decision is, you know, it's on, it's up, it's between them and God. It's their baby. Whose baby? The mother. She's got the right to kill it. If she can't, if she feels she can't take care of it, or. She、um, so that's criteria. I can't take care of this. It's going to interfere with my life. I'll kill it. Yes. Wow. You value human life. Yeah. Were you a Christian? Um, in a sense, I I believe in God completely. So what's the sixth commandment? I don't know. You shall not kill. Why would you advocate the murder of a child in the womb if you know God says you shall not kill? You should you should be 
dogmatically against the killing of children in the womb. It's the safest place on earth, a woman's womb, so why would you say it's okay to kill children in the womb? There's no way that you're going to change my opinion on this, because I believe it is a woman's choice. I just... I personally would not do it, but I believe it should be a choice. You know, there's all sorts of medical problems, there's all sorts of birth defects, whatever. So you know that their quality of life is going to be pretty much restrained into a 9x9 nine nine hospital room. So you're saying... Do you really think that it, it's fair to kind of live that... You know what I mean? What type of quality of life is that? The Nazis are in front of you. They're going to kill kids with Down syndrome. They're going to kill them all. They did this. Uh -huh. You think that's okay then? No, absolutely not. They've got a bad quality of life. Definitely not. And who's to say that they have a bad quality of life? There's no possible way that that child will have a good life. So why raise that child to have a bad life? How can you make that judgment when the child's not born? Um, I can say that about any child. This child could have a bad life. I think I'll kill it. Or, what about you? It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when? Um, when you're really messed up and you're about to beat that kid or something. We're talking about a holocaust in America, in our country, that's sanctioned by the government. Do you think it's okay to kill kids in the womb? I don't think it's okay. I, do, I, do, I just don't think that... Um... But isn't that like what Nazi Germany was about? It's like saying, what Hitler did was wrong. I think it's his choice. I don't think it's okay, but he did it, and it was his choice to do so, and he had the sanction of the German people because they allowed him in, so it's okay, but even though it, you know, I don't agree with it. Can you see it's a similar thing? Uh... I guess when you put it like that, it, it is very similar, yeah. It's very similar to, to say that, um, I guess me saying that it's okay for someone to choose is the same thing as saying it's okay for Hitler to choose. Are you going to change your stance on it? Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely making me think, yeah. I'd like you to feel like you would in Germany when Jews are being killed all around you. You'd be horrified, and we've got a holocaust in America where tr real babies are being murdered because of a woman, woman's choice, and it's legal. It's like Nazi Germany. He did it legally. He didn't do anything legally wrong. But I think in some situations, it can be necessary. I think. Do, do you think it's a baby in the womb? Yeah. So finish the sentence off for me. Killing a baby in the womb is okay when? Uh, oh, there we go. Never. <laughs> Brittany, I noticed you called it a child. So finish the sentence for me. It's okay to kill a child in the womb when? Well, maybe it's just okay if you adopt it out and just not keep it because if somebody's not ready for it. So you're saying that you're changing your mind about yeah. abortion right now? Yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds bad when you put it in that kind of words. Would you ever vote for someone who was for the killing of children in the womb? No. Well, that's great. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yeah, it's not something I've thought about much, but I figured if I was ever in a situation like that, I'd just give it up for adoption if I couldn't take care of it myself, so, but I've never really thought of it like that, I guess. Isn't that great to give it up for adoption instead of killing it? Yeah. It's a wonderful option, adoption. And just as you felt strongly about the life of Jews, and we need to rise up as one person to speak against it, don't you think we need to do that when it comes to the issue of abortion? I think you have a valid point there. So I never think, paralleled those two. Um, the Holocaust and yeah, abortion. Yeah. I feel like it should be allowed because it is a choice, but I feel like it. I personally would not do it. It's just... I I'm making you... So you, could, you wouldn't kill Jews, but it's okay for someone else to kill them? Yes. So what would you say to, to someone like you in Germany that says, well, it's, you should never kill Jews, but I think people should have the right to do it? I don't think... Oh... Because that's what yeah, you said. That said is that. what I said, huh? Okay. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, that's, I've just changed my mind about abortion. So are you going to vote differently in future? Well, when you do vote? Which is... Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. So you changed your mind about abortion? Yeah. When you put it that way, it does change your mind. It's never okay to kill a baby in the womb. Okay, so you're going to change your mind about abortion? Yes, I am. Are you going to vote differently in future? Yes, vote against abortion. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when... In my heart, I would say never. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, I have. <laughs> you think it's a baby in the womb? Yes. So what justification is there for killing a baby in the womb? Can you think of one? Um, 
for killing a baby in the womb. Um, well, I think everyone's situation is... It, it, Give me a situation where you could say, yep, that's justifiable. You can kill that baby because of... Um, you know what? I can't think of one. America's Holocaust. A people who forget, a nation who forgets its past is destined to repeat itself. Isn't that what's happening in America today? Isn't that what's happened? Why is it that a lion named Cecil garners a louder voice than the silent cries of the innocent babies in their mother's womb? Why is it? Jesus says there's not a sparrow that falls from the sky that he doesn't know it all together. And then he goes on to say, how much more important are you than the, than the fowl of the air? How much more important is human life than animals on this earth? We are a people. We are a nation which I believe does not take God seriously. I believe we're a nation of low and extreme morals. Low morals. Very low moral standards. A nation who has abused their rights. In 42 years since Roe versus Wade, 42 years ago, since Roe versus Wade, America, America alone, that's, this is not worldwide, America alone has murdered 59,667,000 babies. Of the world's current population, 300, uh, not the world, but of the nation's current population, 320 million, that's 19% of this current world's popula or nation's population. Planned Parenthood has brought this on. All the, the stuff you see in the news has brought this on, and, and I've been following it pretty intense over the last three weeks. Planned Parenthood has been murdering babies since 1970, three years before Roe versus Wade. Planned Parenthood since 1970 has murdered 6.9 million babies. And as you follow the news and the accusations are true, they're dissecting those babies today and selling their body parts for profit. Planned Parenthood has, de has destroyed the lives, has killed 220,000 innocent babies this year. And last week... The United States Senate voted, in light of all the accusations and stuff brought against Planned Parenthood, the, the films and the videos that have been revealed, the United States Senate, the U.S. Senate, voted not to defund Planned Parenthood. Not to. Two of the Pennsylvania U.S. Senators, two of them, Pat Toomey, and what's his name? Casey, Bob Casey Jr. Toomey supported to defund Planned Parenthood. Casey did not. And he says he's pro-life. Our Senate Majority Leader shot down the idea of sending this through on another bill through the Senate, which would have assured it would have went through and got the votes. But he wanted it on a standalone bill, which requires 60 votes. And they shot it down. Folks, I want you to know that I believe this with all my heart, and, and, and I know you know this. But 
but this country is morally corrupt. We are morally corrupt. The Holocaust took, began in, in 1933 and lasted through 1945. And it took the lives of 6 million plus Jews, of which 1.8 million of those were children. Abortion, America's Holocaust, something that we talk about only at the political seasons, the political times of year. But I believe even the church today, and there's no greater platform than to share this than from the church pulpits. We need to be reminded about this. Murder, the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Fifty-nine million babies. In 42 years, since 1973, when the Supreme Court made a decision to make abortion legal, placing our official stamp of approval as a nation upon the death of innocent children. It's sad. It breaks my heart. I'm going to be a pappy. I got to see that little baby in the womb. And I told Pastor Tim that if she goes in labor now, I'm leaving. And we decided that there would be two in labor then, Pastor Tim and my daughter. <laughs> Rush him to the hospital. The death of the innocent. You know what? And just as surely, just as surely as those 59 million plus innocent babies opened their eyes in glory in heaven with Jesus. I pray that the babies yet to come this year and in the future, will awake to the life here on earth that God had intended for them. If you've lost a child in here, maybe not through abortion or even through abortion, but you lost a child. I know many of you have had miscarriages. What happened to my baby? Patty's not here with us today, but she just lost a child this week. Maybe you've experienced the pain and the hurt that comes along with that. I want to share a passage of Scripture with you. You find it in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. I want to reassure you this morning through this passage. This is not our main text. We're going to read our main text here right after this verse. But King David, his first son, his first son was ill. God said he was going to die. And his first son was ill for seven days. King David laid on the ground when his son became ill. King David laid on the ground. He, he was on the earth, the Bible said. Laid upon the earth, the Bible said, for seven days. He mourned for his son who was sick and who was dying. He fasted for seven days. He refused to eat. He refused to drink. And he cried out to God. He wept for his son. And his servants, when the baby took his last breath, his servants were murmuring amongst themselves. And King David saw them murmuring. And they were afraid to tell him about the fact that his son died because they weren't sure what he, how he would respond. They weren't sure. But King David asked, he said, is the baby dead? Is my son dead? Is the baby dead? And they said, yes, he's dead. King David got up off the ground. He cleaned himself up. He went and washed himself. He ate and he drank. And in verse, I mean, and, 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 and listen, in complete contrast to what they expected, in complete contrast, if we lose our child, we mourn and we weep and we hurt and we sorrow, but David gets up. And here's what he says in verse 23 of 2 Samuel chapter 12. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast, or why should I fast? He's not here. He said, can I bring him back again? No. 
I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Now let me tell you something. Whether David was insinuating that my son is dead and I'm certainly going to go into the grave, that death is imminent, or whether he was referring to an eternal existence beyond this life, we don't know exactly, but it doesn't matter because they're both true. David got up. It was almost as he rejoiced. My son's dead. My son's gone. I'm rejoicing, no longer fasting, no longer praying for him. Clean myself up, put on fresh clothes, eat and drink, because I am going to be with him. For you mothers in here that have lost, had miscarriages and lost your babies. We don't know why, but I believe the Bible teaches us that those children are in glory today. And that's not some sentimentalism that I'm offering you. That's what I believe the Bible teaches us. Those children are in glory. Abortion, America's Holocaust. I want us to look this morning at Jeremiah chapter 1. I want us to just look at verse 5. Look at verse 5 as we comb through it this morning. And we're not going to get done here today, and that's okay. This is a two-part, maybe even a three-part message. God speaks to Jeremiah And look at the first four words in verse 5. Before I, before I, God, Jehovah, Yahweh, before I formed you. Before I formed you. Listen, God controls conception. God dictates that. God controls that. Before I formed you, Jeremiah, In the belly, before I formed you in the belly. God is in control of conception. God does that. He says, I knew you. I knew what you were going to be. Jeremiah, there are moms and dads in here. I don't know, is a dare in here? Stacy and Nancy, let me ask you something, because I know you're not shy about this. I wouldn't put every parent on the spot. But do you know what a dare is going to be when she grows up? You don't, do you? But God does. Just like he knew what Jeremiah was going to be. He knew. He knows what a dare is going to be like when she grows up. Mom and dad don't have a crystal ball. But God spoke to Jeremiah. He says, before I formed thee, Jeremiah, in the belly, I control conception. He says, I knew you. I knew what you were going to become. And before you came forth out of the womb, before you did this, Jeremiah, I set you apart. I sanctified you. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I knew what you were going to do, Jeremiah. I knew who you were going to be. I controlled when you were conceived in the womb. And my plan is for you, Jeremiah, to be a preacher to the nations. God controls all that. We don't control that. Folks, there's a great tragedy today. Because the God-given purposes for every child in this life belong to God. And He's the one that, that has the rightful determination and purpose for that child. But there's a great tragedy right under our nose in our own homeland, and it's approved by the law of this land. You and I need to pray. And I want you to know that that prayer is more powerful than politicians. Prayer is more powerful than judges. I want you to look at Proverbs. I want to give you a couple of scriptures to take home with you here. We're going to look at them. I want you to take them home and, and use for fodder this week in your own study. But look at Proverbs chapter 12 and look at verse 28. We're going to speak boldly about this because I believe God does. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. Underline this in your Bibles. It says, in the way, the path, the path, 
the path of righteousness, in the way or the path of righteousness. Righteousness is moral justice, morality, cor- moral correctedness. Moral justice is what? Life. In the path of righteousness, in the path of moral justice, in the path of moral correctedness is life. And in the pathway, the beaten down path, the trodden path, the trail thereof, there is no death. The path of moral duty, the path of our moral responsibility as Christians and as parents is the way of safety for the unborn. We're talking about babies with souls. Since the moment of conception, in fact, Jeremiah even says before conception. But more than that, babies who have developed physically, babies who have beating hearts. I saw my daughter Heather's little unborn child, Oliver. I saw his heart beating. I got to listen to it beat. Do you know what else I got to see in the womb? I got to see his fists, his hands, and them clinch like this. Have you ever seen that with the ultrasounds? Beating heart, clenching fists. I saw his eyes open in the womb. Mothers know how many of you have been, been shared by your doctors in your, in your, your, uh, your, your uh, um, neonatal care They tell you that that you can talk to the child. The child can hear in the womb. Have you heard that, Mom? Do you know that? How many of you have sang to your child? They have hearing ears. And yet, babies sense the development of ultrasounds have been seen recoiling in pain as they try to escape their killers. And if the way the coroner determines that a person is completely dead is by the absence of brain waves, shouldn't the presence of brain waves prove life? How was it four years ago that this Massachusetts woman, uh, this lady in Massachusetts, who murdered her nine-year-old daughter, murdered her nine-year-old daughter, she was seven months pregnant, she stabbed herself in the womb, and Massachusetts charged her with double homicide. Why should she be tried and not all the others who killed her babies? Does that sound like a double standard to you? You and I, I share with Pastor Tim in our devotion time this morning. You and I are to speak out about this. I want you to look at Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. And I want you to look at verse 8 and 9. We're supposed to speak out. We're to raise our voices to protect the innocent. We're not rioters. We're not picketers. But we are to speak out. In Proverbs chapter 8, it says, open, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8, it says, open thy mouth. America, I want you to know that's not a yawn. And I think that's the case in the church. We're yawning about this. Open your mouth. Speak for the dumb. Those who, the the dumb, my Bible says dumb. Your Bible may say something different. But the dumb in this case is those who cannot plead their own case. Those who are speechless. Open your mouth. Open thy mouth for the speechless. For those who cannot plead their case. In the cause of, that means plead. Plead for all such as are appointed to destruction. Those who cannot protect themselves, those who cannot speak out against in their own defense, those who are speechless, we are to plead for their cause, the ones that are appointed to destruction. Open your mouth, verse 9 says. Speak for. Judge righteously according to righteousness and plead the cause of the poor, the afflicted, and the needy, the destitute. The Bible says and teaches us that God hates the shedding of innocent blood. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, the Bible tells us that righteousness, um, blood, that righteous blood cries out for vengeance. 
Abel's blood in Genesis 4.10 cried out to God whenever Cain had killed him. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 10 says that the blood of the Christian martyrs cry out unto God. And here's what they say, how long, O God? How long, O God, before you return and take vengeance? The victim in an abortion ranks as the most innocent victim ever sentenced to death. Who's going to cry out for them? Romans 12, 19 says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We are not to institute vengeance. But who's going to cry out for them? If I approached you this morning, and I would not do this, but if I approached you this morning, and I put my hands on your neck, and I began to push with all my might with my thumbs on your voice box, at least you could try to get away. At least somebody could come to your aid. At least you could attempt to cry out. But who's going to cry out for the unborn? They can't get away. And you know what the pro-abortion crowd says? Here's what they yell and scream about freedom of choice. It's my body. It's my right. It's my choice. Do you know what I say? Make your choice before conception and not after it. While you and I are at work tomorrow, many of us will be at work, some of you are retired, but while we're at work tomorrow, those of us that are at work tomorrow, nearly 5,000 innocent babies will be submitted to capital punishment. 5,000 in America. No trial before they're executed. No attorney. You know what? They're not even treated humanely. They're not given the basic anesthetics used by every, every veterinarian in this world. But they will die a torturous death. 5,000 a day. I think that's worldwide. We're to speak out against this. I told Pastor Tim this this morning. How many of you have been in a parking lot at a shopping mall or at the grocery store and somebody whips in, just whips in to, the, to a handicapped parking spot and they get out and they're not handicapped or they've borrowed somebody else's placard and you know that by the way they get out because they just go walking, there's, not, there's no problem with it. I don't know about you, but when I see that happen, when I see that happening, and I've seen it, how many of you have seen that happen before? Does that build up inside of you a righteous indignation when that happens? It does me, and it probably does you. So much to the point, if I'm with somebody, my wife or my children, I will talk about it. That's ridiculous what they're doing. That's not right. Somebody really needs that spot, and they took it, or that they're taking advantage of that. That's the stuff that you and I, as much as I want to talk about somebody pulling inappropriately in a handicapped parking spot, we need to talk out, talk out, speak out about the murder of unborn children. It's time for the people of God to rise up with some righteous indignation. Violence is not the solution. But we have the opposite problem, and that's apathy and unforgetfulness. A nation or a people who forgets her past is destined to repeat it. But God hasn't forgotten. God hasn't forgotten, and I believe he's angry with the wicked every day. You know, and, and I, tr I, I try to somehow even think that if if, if, if Matthew 18, 6 or Matthew 19, 14, where Jesus says, Suffer not the little children to come unto me. Or if anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble who believe in me, it would be better for a millstone to be hung around their neck and them drowned in the midst of the sea. If I could somehow make, you know, in some way in my mind, make those passages fit, just to even illustrate how much little children are precious in the eyes of God. And how serious he takes for someone to take a life or disrupt their life in any way. 
Yet when someone is pregnant with a child, the experts say, who may be less than perfect, you heard them talk about it on the video, maybe less than perfect. Do you know what they're encouraged to do? They're encouraged to eliminate it. Francis Schaeffer, who's a man from the 70s, I don't know what he did, if he was an apologist or what he was, I'm not sure, but he made this statement. He warned us in the 70s that abortion was the beginning, he said, of a slippery slope of belittlement of human life that would eventually lead to euthanasia and such things as physicians-assisted suicides. At that time, the people were skeptical. But it looks like he was right. Folks, next week, when we come together, we're going to look at this. In God's eyes, please listen, in God's eyes, life is sacred. Life is sacred. In America, I think life is scared. Life is scared. Next week when we come together, we're going to look at these three points. Life is sacred because God made it. Number two, we're going to look at life is sacred no matter what the condition might be. And number three, we're going to look at life is sacred because it is eternal in nature. And then we're going to look at what should you and I do about the issue of abortion. What should we do? If any of you have and would like a copy of that video, it's 37 minutes long. Today it was only 18, 19 minutes. I have 10 of them. I bought them a couple years ago. Would you like to pass it along to somebody? If you see me, and I'll make sure you get one to keep and have. But next week we come together, we'll look at life is sacred because God made it. Life is sacred no matter what the condition might be. And life is sacred because it's eternal in nature. And what should we do about abortion?